Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we continue my journey to complete city skylines with a population of 100,000. In the previous episode, we managed to construct an international airport and cargo hub, and I've laid down some basic roads for the area that we're going to be expanding in today. I actually feel that today we will reach the population mark of 100,000, and I've already laid some roads and subway down on the area that I wish to expand in. I do want to add an IT cluster, that's something that we haven't done already, and experiment with some of the giant skyscrapers and big buildings that we haven't used in the playthrough so far. So our international airport and cargo hub has worked out quite nicely, bringing plenty of new citizens in. I've already put down a railway and we've already got a subway infrastructure running along this avenue here. So it's just a case of laying some roads down and putting in some high density residential. We're at a population of 73,000 and although that seems quite far away from the 100 mark, once we put down a big dense residential area down here, it won't take very long to reach our milestone. One of the things that I haven't experimented with is an IT cluster, so I want to do that because some of the larger skyscrapers can be found when you specialise in that office specialisation. just want to straighten this road out. This avenue is built on a little bit of a hill, so some of the roads might look a little bit wonky, but we're going to grid this area off and make a very dense residential area. It's already got the subway which is connected to the airport and we've already got a railway infrastructure in. Just going to flatten this area off a little bit and use the terrain tool. It's one of the tools you shouldn't really be scared to use, actually, level terrain. If you just left click on the road and then right click, it will bring your desired level up a little bit and uh, it, it can improve the look of your city. So don't be scared of using this tool. The terrain tool is something that you really need to use if you guys are playing along as well. So my intention is to lay down some more roads in the center here and build up something that's quite dense and hopefully we're at a 73,000 population mark right now and although that seems like we've got quite a bit to go to get to the 100,000 mark this area is not going to be a suburb it is going to be a giant heavy dense city and I also want to put some office buildings here but we want to experiment with the IT cluster that's one of the district specializations that I never used and in amongst that that will generally generate some of the larger skyscrapers and I really want to finish off this city with some of the big skyscrapers that uh, will really add and give us a skyline so as you can see we're just flattening off this area here and like I say this is definitely one of the tools that you should use it's dead easy it's just left click on the height that you want and then right click will just automatically bring the levels up and down. I'm going to use some roads with trees this will make the area a little bit more expensive and as always you want to be careful how many junctions you bring off of your roads so I really don't want too many junctions coming off the avenue and I'm just going to make some basic grids and like I say this is going to be quite a dense residential area so even though it's going to look very gritty and blocky I tend to find that some of the bigger cities looking at New York and cities like that they can very much look like a grid from the sky and we're going to make it so it's got some blocks having the residential in the center having the commercial and offices on the outside of the avenues at least that's my plan anyway so let's bring some grid roads out now I'm leaving a little bit of a gap down the middle so I can fit a pathway helps our citizens walk between the blocks encourage a little bit more walking on the other side I'm going to mirror that slightly perhaps having the roads or pathways running in the opposite direction 
So let's just bring that down here and then we'll grid it off a little bit differently. And there's no room for any pathways between these roads, but I'll have the pathways perhaps running in a different direction. So if we come into, you can either do it from the park, it's easier if I go to the train tool and the parkway paths. We'll do some paths with decorations down the city center. As you can see, there's this little gap here and that ensures that we can get the biggest buildings. That's why I leave that little gap there. So we've got tiles of four rather than three. And I want to utilize as much space as possible. Now there's no gap here, so I'm going to have the pathways running up this way instead. And now we've only got two ways into the residential area. They can walk from the avenue. And as you can see, there's subways on each corner of these avenues already. If I put a pathway perhaps just in front of this one, they can get off the subway, just walk onto the residential area. And this will hopefully ease traffic because one of the biggest issues you face in city skylines is traffic. Okay, so some of the larger buildings that I didn't experiment with, one of them was this central park here. Just leveled the terrain off. Hopefully it doesn't look too bumpy. I think we need to level the terrain a little bit. But this is a giant park and this is going to increase the value of our property quite quickly. And uh, I'm going to use some of the specialized parks and buildings that we unlocked that we haven't used in this area. There's things like museums and uh, there's actually some special skyscrapers that I've been saving for the biggest area of the city. Again, I'm just going to use that terrain tool. We'll just level it off and I think hang on, that's not working correctly. Um, it's lifting the ground up, not leveling it. We need to be on level terrain. It's the wrong one. So left click, then right click and we'll just get rid of that jagged edge. So I can perhaps put a road around the outside and it kind of fits in with the terrain a lot nicer when we do this. So it's definitely worth just taking the time to do this so everything fits in a little bit nicer and especially with these larger buildings. Yeah, things can look a little bit off but it's a giant park, looks like it's got an auditorium in it. It's really nice subways just running either side of it. So that will raise the value of our city in the center here straight away. I like it. So just anticipating any rubbish area that we might get, I'm going to put a little bit of an industrial zone there ready. This is where I'm planning to put our IT cluster. So if we go into districts and designate this whole area here, that building at the top there I've just put in is a shoe factory or a sneaker factory. And if we go to office buildings, but if we go into specializations, you'll see here that we've got the IT cluster, which is one that I haven't used. So any of the buildings that spawn here, they're going to be a lot bigger skyscrapers and you really need educated citizens to use this stuff. So it's why it's better to use it at towards the end. And uh, we've got plenty of university students now so we can use this IT cluster. It would be a shame if we got to the end of the playthrough and we never put in any of the giant clusters. Just uh, get rid of these blocks here because it's just kind of come into our sneaker factory that's going to sit in the middle of it all. And we'll see what kind of buildings spawn. Hopefully a lot of giant skyscrapers and I've got a few extra specialist skyscrapers that I'm going to put in amongst it once things start to generate. As you can see population wise we're at 74,000 but I've largely been building with suburbs and I've gone quite easy on the dense residential. It can be dangerous to build your cities up too quick. You can in fact really lose the game. It's not a question of how much money you have, even though we've got 
just over 4 million in the bank here. We could still lose it if we get traffic jams. Perhaps people can't get their rubbish sorted, which causes sickness and death and your population will go down. So at any point of the game, if you're not careful, you can lose it. So, but I'm pretty confident that with the infrastructure we've got down now, that we can handle just putting in a very dense part of our city now. So I'm going to make all of this dense residential. I'll put some schools in the middle there and along the outside we're going to put down a lot of dense commercial, just generic commercial shops and bars that should sort of spawn here and just continue along the outside. As you can see, we haven't got any electricity to the subways yet, but on each corner here, citizens can get in on the subway. Again, easing traffic. One of the problems that you can run into is if you've got too many small roads coming off your avenue, you cause traffic jams and traffic lights are needed. And unless you're using mods to direct traffic, you can run into trouble so you really need to be careful and as with most of my playthroughs and, and this game is available on consoles as well I try not to use many mods and the mods that I have used in this playthrough have largely just been to improve the way it looks I've been using a photo realistic LUT and uh, some of the camera mods that I've put on have just helped me get different shots of the city but nothing that I have put in here has been something you can't get on console. I've used a mixture of all of the DLCs that are available including the Sunset Harbour DLC which is the latest release and uh, the one I wanted to experiment with. Okay so I've let the simulation run for an hour or so we're approaching the 83,000 mark on the population and people are moving in quite quickly. As you can see our IT cluster and office blocks have built up quite nicely but some of these buildings they do look very similar which is precisely why I've saved some of my big skyscrapers to place in amongst them and sort of break up the look here. So first of all I'm just going to go into some of the China DLC and there was a few large skyscrapers that I've specifically saved just to shove in amongst these buildings giving our skyline a totally different look. Oh look at this one's absolutely huge. Perhaps I want to put that one at the back and this will help just break up these buildings and give our skyline a totally different feel. Now it's not just the China DLC that these unique buildings are available in. You do unlock them with certain milestones. And yeah, I, I mean already it's kind of given this area a totally different feel. Just putting a few of these in amongst what we do have. So we'll just sort of space them out. And yeah, it gives, it gives this area a totally different feel. So let's see what else we've got left. So I'm going to use the rest of them. Yeah, there's a couple more here. I like this one. Okay. Perhaps just off the road just here. And there we go. Sort of giving this high rise area a totally different feel with the international airport in the background there. And we've got one more here. These are all unique buildings, I believe copies of actual real architecture that you can find in China, but um, they're going in our city. And there's also, like I say, there's, there's other unique buildings that we unlock with certain milestones. So if we, have we got any more from the China one? Perhaps not here. We've got some of the smaller office blocks, which might go quite nicely, perhaps towards the front. And other unique things. There's a space center there. But uh, if we go in here, there's a museum, which I wouldn't mind putting down. Cathedral of Platitude. I'm not so sure about that one. Uh, here we go. We've got the high-rise interest tower. 
I think that's another one that might sit nicely amongst this group of high rise. And it's kind of broken that area up and given it a totally different feel, just putting some of these unique skyscrapers in amongst these smaller ones. Yeah, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. And uh, I'd like to use some of these other unique buildings. How about the Science Centre, just off the avenue here? Again, this is going to raise land value and in turn that will raise the population. So we've got a Science Centre, I've put that right next to the subway, so you can get off the subway and go to the Science Centre. And as you can see, there's the land value and could probably stick some of these other buildings on the other side where it's more red and perhaps the museum the modern art museum we'll put that in perhaps again next to another subway might sit quite nicely next to our central park somewhere around here put that here and again you can see all them smiley faces that's because we've increased land value there and it's just made it a more desirable location. So we haven't got any water coming through here. I missed them pipes, so get them all connected up. Okay, so I'm liking it. Again, still quite a bit of expansion to do. Still plenty more residential areas that can be filled in here. Already approaching the 85,000 mark now. And I think there was a couple of buildings that I could use that were in the China DLC. These ones here, we've got this hotel here. Perhaps that one might fit quite nicely in next to our science center, just around the corner from the subway. There we go. The Badero Hotel. You can see people using our subway and traffic is okay at the moment everything seems to be flowing reasonably well throughout our city i will be doing some detailing putting a few more trees in but yeah i think just putting them skyscrapers down has made a big difference so now it's just a waiting game as you can see not all of the areas have been filled in quite yet I want to avoid putting residentials, I think, just off of that main road. Avoid parking there. Okay, so here's a problem. As you can see, we've got the highway traffic backing up right onto the back of the highway here. So many cars trying to get into two parts of the city. Now, I have put a highway exit. As you can see, people can get out there. But getting in... I think we could do with another off-ramp just coming in and linking up with our avenue perhaps from here and then hopefully that will take pressure off the roundabout and it's another way for citizens to get into our city. Okay, can we get over the top here? We just come sort of halfway in. It will work. We can stretch over the top here. There we go. So we'll come over the top and then if we bring that round just onto the avenue. Now a lot of them cars will be heading to the airport but the ones that need to get into our city just need the curving road. Perhaps come into this residential area they can come in just through here. As you can see the traffic's not too bad off of the avenue. So now they've got another opportunity to get into the city and avoid that roundabout hopefully some of the cars start using that entrance and that in turn leads to relieving the pressure off of that highway exit there so we've got two entrances so let's just keep an eye on that because it could end up a problem although it's not a complete standstill things are moving it could work against us Okay, so traffic has eased off, as you can see, just on the roundabout. I'm just putting some trees around the outside here and along the highway. And we are very close to the 100,000 mark now. 98,000, in fact. 
we are pretty close to completing our challenge and reaching a population of 100,000 in Century City. I do like to put trees along the highway here and sort of acts as a sound barrier as well. Even though it's office buildings and they're not really too bothered about too much sound, it, it does help raise land value and uh, it also, like I say, the sound barrier through the trees. You'd naturally find that off the highway in pretty much any city that you would find. So there we go, just dot some of these around like so. But that extra exit that we've put on has solved our traffic issue. Things are flowing in nicely. And as you can see, it's not put too much pressure onto our avenue. Things are flowing around this area of the city still quite nicely. So I really don't need to do much more other than wait because we're going to hit that milestone very, very soon. Let's put perhaps a tiny bit more residential in there. Not that we're not going to meet our mark, it's just some of these gaps we can fill in. Stick some trees again. Block in some of the noise from the commercial area that leads into our residential zone. I have some trees coming along this road here. So it is inevitably going to be a busy city and the road is going to be slightly busy but I've only got them a couple of junctions and it hasn't stopped things flowing so as long as we can get our traffic around the city everything's working quite nicely. I've put a little bit more industrial down just here. We've got like a toy factory that was one of the unique buildings I've placed there. I'm just putting some trees in along the road. Over here I've put a little suburb just to help out as well. These are not dense residential just uh, small residential but I, I feel that that should be enough now to push us up to the 100,000 mark and we've got just a tiny bit of industry there perhaps I could put a few office buildings perhaps just running along the outside here not the IT buildings just normal generic office buildings because there is a demand for it and Obviously, the more citizens we have, they need to work somewhere. So I can get rid of that power line and that'll all just connect up naturally. So everything's working out quite nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with how this area of the city has turned out. So just another couple of thousand citizens and we're there. I don't think there's any need to put any dense residential here. This is just a, a little suburb off of our main city area. Okay, there we go, a population of 100,000. So we've managed to complete city skylines and our challenge to reach a population of 100,000 in Century City. I think if we push it on much further than this, the game can slow down to the pace of an asthmatic hippo. So we don't want to push it too much further. And of course, there are plenty of other challenges we could have gone for. All of these monuments here that are dark just require some other things to be done. So we could have certainly pushed on and perhaps gone for some other challenges. But essentially, we set out to reach a population of 100,000. And we've now done that. And I'm really happy with how this build has turned out. Everything seems to be working really well. And we've used a good combination of all of the DLCs to get here. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. Now, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to perhaps see some more City Skyline stuff from myself in the future. I can certainly do a couple of guides and I more than likely will be back with a bonus episode that I've got an idea for and we could certainly come back. I do like to do a few tutorials on games that I play on my channel and Skylines has just been pretty much a let's play. I haven't done any guides or tutorials so I think that perhaps I could come back and do a couple of them and at least give you some tips and tricks on how to manage your cities and get started so 
Let me know down in the comments. Perhaps one day we could come back and do another City Skylines challenge. Perhaps next time we could come back with some mods and definitely experiment further. But that's it for myself and Century City. Until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.